number uh, 210, which is a motion with confidence in the Minister for Housing, Planning and Local Government. Can I call on Deputy Owen O'Brien uh, to move the motion? Deputy O'Brien, you have 20 minutes. Thank you, Ken Corlin. I'll uh, move the motion and share time with uh, Deputy MacDonald. Ken Corlin, 15 months ago, when Owen Murphy uh, was appointed Minister for Housing, I said I wanted him to succeed. I told his House that if he implemented the right policies, I would commend him. But I also said that I would hold him to account if he pursued the wrong options. Fifteen months on, it is clear that both Owen Murphy as Minister and his housing policy, Rebuilding Ireland, has failed. Since the plan was published over two years ago, homelessness has increased 60 per cent. Child homelessness has increased 77 per cent. And pensioner homelessness has increased by an unimaginable 80 per cent. Can any of us imagine if it was our mother or our father in emergency accommodation? Not knowing where they were going to sleep tonight, moving from hotel to hostel, scared, anxious and confused. Can call it this is the reality of rebuilding Ireland. And behind every single statistic lies somebody's brother or sister, mother or father. And every single one of the 10,000 plus homeless people including the 4,000 children who will sleep tonight in emergency accommodation, are being failed by Owen Murphy and his housing plan. And the reasons for this, Kian Corla, are very clear. The government continues to underinvest in social and affordable housing. They continue to rely on the private sector to meet social and affordable housing need. Now, that approach failed when last tried by Fianna Fáil in government, and indeed, it is failing now. This year, less real social homes owned by local authorities and approved housing bodies will be delivered by government than last year. Just 5,869 real social homes will be added to the social housing stock if the government meets their targets. And meanwhile, more than 20,000 families will be pushed into subsidised private rental accommodation. 78% of so-called social housing need tenancies will be met by insecure and expensive private sector tenancies. As the Minister knows, this is bad for tenants, it's bad for our housing system and it's definitely bad for the taxpayer. And what about those who are not eligible for social housing? Well, we know rents are up 22% since 2016, house prices up 18% in the same period. Tens of thousands of working families are simply unable to rent or buy. And yet not a single affordable home to rent or purchase has been delivered by this government last year, this year and probably not next year either. The government's much hyped Rebuilding Ireland Home Loan has delivered just 134 mortgages since February. Developments on public land, such as the Grange, in my own constituency, could have genuinely affordable homes to rent and to buy, but the Minister refuses to intervene. Instead, we will have houses for sale between €320,000 and €500,000. How is any working family meant to afford homes at this price? And meanwhile, tens of thousands of vacant homes lie empty in our cities and towns. We were promised 1,600 vacant homes for the homeless to be delivered by the Housing Agency. And despite 3,967 such homes being offered to government over two years, a paltry 529 have been bought. The Buy and Renew scheme, we were told, promised 500 homes to be brought back into stock. And yet how many have been delivered? Just 70. And the Repair and Lease scheme promised 800 homes to be delivered, but only 15 so far. And the Taoiseach's proposal on appointment of Minister Murphy for a vacant property tax has quietly been dropped. Now, in defence today, I'm sure the Minister and his colleagues will say that planning permissions are up and home completions are up, and that's correct. But overpriced student accommodation at €1,000 per month or unaffordable family homes from €320,000 upwards will not solve this crisis. Minister Murphy knows Rebuilding Ireland is fundamentally flawed. It is failing. It is making the problem worse. And what a good minister would do, what a courageous minister would do, is go to Cabinet and say, the plan is not working. We need to change. 
The fact that Owen Murphy can't even see the failure in front of him demonstrates why he must go. His blind defence of rebuilding Ireland is proof of how out of touch and how out of depth he really is. It confirms beyond any doubt that he is now an obstacle to addressing the real causes of this crisis. Now, the Minister claims that this motion is a personal attack on him and nothing could be further from the truth. He is the Minister, the book stops with him, his plan is failing and it's time he and his colleagues took responsibility for that. He says that the housing crisis cannot be solved overnight and yes, he's correct. But Fine Gael have been in government for seven long years and this is their housing and homelessness crisis as much as it is Fianna Falls. And the Minister, of course, also claims that the opposition has no policy alternatives, that we are devoid of solutions. And again, of course, this is simply not true. We've produced fully costed budgets and a raft of policy proposals and bills that the Minister has chosen to ignore. We have proposed continually a doubling of capital investment in social and affordable housing. We've urged the government to take advantage of the finance for the credit unions, the Housing Finance Agency and the European Investment Bank. We have published detailed proposals on how to speed up the delivery of much needed public housing. We've tabled legislation to provide real security of tenure, halt rent hikes and improve standards in the private rental sector. We propose an emergency three-year rent freeze and tax relief of a full month's rent to help make rent more affordable. We tabled the Focus Ireland Amendment, which would have prevented hundreds of families from losing their homes. We've tabled legislation to ensure all families at risk of homelessness would have homeless prevention plans in place at least 60 days before losing their homes. And we propose detailed regulations for the short-term letting sector and comprehensive proposals for improving building standards and addressing the legacy of latent defects. Unfortunately, time after time, Fianna Fáil has lined up with Fine Gael to block these proposals. Micheál Martin's party refused to support our bill that would have enshrined the right to housing in the Constitution. He blocked his TDs from, from supporting the Focus Ireland Amendment, which would have prevented hundreds of families from becoming homeless. And what have Fianna Fáil proposed instead? More tax breaks for developers. Clearly Fianna Fáil haven't learned from their mistakes of the past. And so it will be the same tonight. Micheál Martin is so weak that he is not willing to stand up to Leo Varadkar. He's so scared of an election that he's willing to allow a failing minister and his failed housing plan to remain in place. And it's time Fianna Fáil stops speaking out of both sides of their mouth on housing. You cannot criticise the government's housing plan and their failing minister one day and then support their housing budgets and support that very minister the next. So I'll say to Micheál Martin in his absence, it's time to put up or shut up. Passing this motion tonight would send a clear signal to government that their housing policy must change. It would ensure that Budget 2019 would be a real housing budget. It could be, in our view, a turning point in our housing and homeless crisis. But if Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael won't listen to the opposition, then they'll have to listen to the people. Across the country, frustration in the housing crisis is turning into anger. Take back the city are giving voice to a locked out generation and the October the 3rd raise the roof rally at 12.30 outside of the door here in my view will be even bigger. This will be the largest civil society coalition that we have seen since Together for Yes or Marriage Equality and the Irish Congress of Trade Unions and all their members, the National Women's Council of Ireland, the Union of Students of Ireland and a raft of homeless NGOs and grassroots housing campaign groups will be speaking with one voice demanding a radical change of policy and real ambitious investment in social and affordable housing. So can call it to conclude, rebuilding Ireland has failed. Minister Owen Murphy has failed and it is time for both to go. I recommend this motion to the House. Thank you, Deputy, Deputy Mary Lou Macdonald. Agus Erdus Boilum on Ruin at Taws or Goranukt a Wulla Agus Boilum of Wilkes a Gawal at Chakta O'Brien or Sucked a Curfew Rod Nadala. Karen Corla, we are in the midst of an unprecedented housing crisis in this state. 
we face a housing emergency. It's a crisis that has worsened every passing day this government has been in office, and it is a crisis that continues to spiral out of control. We all know the statistics. We all know the numbers. God knows they are daily intoned and recorded on our broadcasting media and in the pages of our newspapers. What we also know, however, is that the reality that whatever the figures is that there is no way to quantify the social and human cost of a crisis that now permeates every facet of Irish life. Homelessness and the housing crisis is now, not now a niche concern or a concern simply for one section of se or sector of Irish society or indeed for any one class. It affects the entirety of our society. Families who in years gone by would never ever have been considered vulnerable now live in absolute fear that a hike in their rent might push them into homelessness. People and couples in their 20s and 30s, unlike their parents before them, have no real prospect of ever being able to afford their own home. Tens of thousands of low and middle income families, once able to secure a decent council house or an affordable home, now languish on waiting lists that will never be cleared. And thousands of children go to bed in emergency accommodation tonight, deprived of a basic right that should not be considered a luxury in childhood. That is somewhere for them to call home. And what about those living in overcrowded, substandard accommodation? In the midst of this crisis and this emergency, they are very often forgotten, left to one side. Behind every outworking of this crisis, there are real lives and real people. And very many of those people took to the streets last weekend, and many, many more of those people will increasingly come out to vent their utter frustration and their anger. The crisis we face has one root cause, and that is a lack of homes. Despite that fact, we have a government that continues to abdicate its responsibility and refuses to build homes in sufficient numbers to house our citizens. Building social and affordable housing is the only long-term policy solution that can properly address the housing crisis. And yet we have a government and a minister that turns their face away from that simple reality. We can house those in need of homes that can't afford a home from their own means. That reduces homelessness and the number of families and citizens in need of rent supplement and HAP. Doing that increases the number of rental properties available and reduces rent inflation and in turn rents. Reducing rents increases the ability of people to save to buy their own homes. And more people with the means to buy their own homes means more homes being built. It's simple uh, economics, which this government refuses to grasp because they would rather safeguard the profits of landlords than to deliver for ordinary citizens. So what have they delivered instead? 6,268 real social homes delivered last year, a drop in the ocean. No affordable housing delivered by government over the past three years. Rents up 22% in two years. And house prices that continue to spiral due to lack of supply. That's the government's failure, and it is a litany of failure, and that is the record of Minister Owen Murphy. The housing crisis is dire, Ceann Corla, but there are solutions. Solving it may well present one of the biggest challenges to a government or a minister, but it is not impossible. We can bring the housing crisis un under control. The state can build homes. We can house our citizens and we can deliver. But that will only happen if there is the political will to do so. 
at every level. And that starts at the top. It starts with the Minister for Housing. Now, no one expects that the Minister can perform miracles. Let's just say that. But in the midst of a crisis, what people do expect and deserve is vision and leadership. And they also expect accountability. And that's what tonight's motion is all about. It's not about playing the man or playing the minister. It is about holding the government and the minister to account. We need a radical change of direction and a radical change of policy. And dismissing those who highlight the extent of the housing crisis and the government's failure is certainly not the answer. Normalising homelessness, as you have done, is not the answer. Doing nothing and sitting on your hands, Fianna Fáil, is not the answer. What we need is bold and urgent action. And so we propose doubling investment in social and affordable housing to deliver homes. The introduction of a temporary tax relief for renters alongside a three-year emergency rent freeze. The introduction of legislation to prevent buy-to-let landlords from seeking vacant possession. The introduction of legislation requiring local authorities to have a homeless prevention plan for all those at risk of losing their homes or tenancies. And, crucially, the enshrining of the right to a home, the right to housing in our constitution, in our basic law. These are just some of the measures, Kian Corla, some of the measures and approaches that are required to tackle this crisis. These are bold, meaningful actions, but they require courage, they require vision, they require real leadership. And these things have been lacking, missing in the government and in Minister Owen Murphy. At the weekend, those citizens that came onto the streets each had their own individual story. Some of them were students who desperately sought accommodation, who told stories of second thoughts as to whether or not they'd in fact be able to go to university or college because of the cost and the lack of availability of accommodation. Others were people who have been on social housing waiting lists for years and years. Many of them were single citizens, some of them were families. Margaret Cash was at the Garden of Remembrance with her beautiful children. She, of course, Count Corley will recall, is the mother who, along with her children, spent the night in Tala Garda Station. And I think that image, perhaps, above all other things, crystallised in the public mind just how deep this crisis is, just how desperately low government standards had fallen. And Margaret Cash addressed the crowd at the Garden of Remembrance. And she said something very simple, but something very profound. She said, I am a mother. She said, I am a traveler citizen. She said, I don't expect anything for nothing. But she said, I do demand respect for myself and my family. She said, I should not sleep in Talagar, the station. No citizen, no mother and her small children should sleep in any Garda station. She said we ought to have a government that is serious about delivering. Not one that sits smugly on the sidelines and dismisses people and dismisses the realities of people's experiences. And so we bring this motion, not as a stunt, not as a personalised action, but because now is the moment to draw a line in the sand and to say enough is enough. Now is the time for all of us, on behalf of the people we represent, to demand, to demand a new approach, to demand policies that work. And for that to happen, the Minister must be held to account 
and the Taoiseach must lead government and he must relieve Minister Murphy of his duties. So it's time now to call a halt to inaction and I want to encourage and urge every Chakta Dala to support our motion before you, the Dáil tonight. Up. The emergency we face demands nothing less than that. Thank you very much, Deputy. Now, De uh, Minister Owen Murphy, please. I, you I understand quote. you're sharing with Minister Pascal Donoghue, Minister Simon Harris, Minister Richard Bruton and Deputy Martin Hayden. That's correct, Cancola. Thank you. Cancola, I had the, um, the privilege recently to meet with a young woman, a young mother with a young child, a homeless family, and she told me her own personal story through tears because she felt ashamed about the situation that she was in. And I apologise to her because she had to spend three weeks in a hotel. Should never have been in that hotel. And we were talking in the hub that she was now in, and she was finding that difficult. She was. But I was able to tell her that she'd be in a home soon. And I was able to tell her that because every family that had gone into that hub since it had been opened less than a year ago had gone into a home, and none had come back into homelessness. And she was brave and she was bright and she was hopeful for the future. And I tried to give her some confidence because I know that we have helped thousands of families like hers up and down this country. In 2017, 2,000 families left hotels, the majority into homes. The last 12 months, 5,000 households have exited homelessness. Up and down the country, thousands of homes are being built by local authorities, by housing bodies and by private builders. Housing supply is going up. But families will, unfortunately and tragically, continue to present to homeless services because we do not have enough homes yet. We are still catching up, but we are catching up. And until we have caught up, we'll put in place every support and every care that is necessary for any family or individual at risk of entering emergency accommodation or who actually does enter into emergency accommodation. I am the Minister for Housing. I am responsible for fixing this crisis piece by piece, and it is complex. Not everything has worked out like we hoped it would. For example, the repair and lease scheme. But there are other initiatives that have worked out better, like our fast-track planning process. Progress won't always be linear, and we will face setbacks. But real progress is being made, real, tangible progress in terms of homes being built. Otherwise, we wouldn't have been able to find homes for all of those families that I mentioned. Otherwise, we wouldn't have local authorities building on their own land up and down the country or big plans for development in front of those same local authorities which are being opposed by some parties in this House, or private homes being opened up on sites, thousands every quarter, and thousands of homes being completed as well. More new homes will be provided this year than in any year in the past decade. Over 20,000 new places to live will be delivered. Still, we have more to do. My job as Minister is to get it done. But I won't be distracted by populist nonsense that contributes nothing to the challenges that we face. And I won't be hounded out of office by personalised ad campaigns and personalised attacks against me. I know people are hurting, Cancorla. I know they are. But if we ignore the progress that, that has been made, if we ignore it for political gain or to try and feed some sort of public outrage or outcry for our own political benefit, if we do that, then we risk making the mistakes of the past. We risk throwing out the good and replacing it with the failed policies that didn't work before like building giant social housing estates that only serve to divide communities rather than unite and support them. I won't be responsible for that. I will not be responsible for damning another generation by making populist short-term decisions. And some people want to believe that this government caused this crisis. We did not, but we will fix it. Some people want people to believe that this crisis, which is more than a decade in the making, could be solved in the 16 months since I came into office. They want people to believe that if they were in government, this crisis will be solved overnight. That is dishonest and it is wrong. And if they worked every single day on this crisis, meeting all of the people who have been so badly hurt by it, and if they were the ones responsible for actually fixing it, they would not be so deceitful, Ken Corla. They would not be so deceitful to the people. We have a plan. It is working. It can be approved. And anyone is free to come forward in this Eruptus and present their alternatives for debate and for agreement. This was Sinn Féin's great opportunity to bring forward their housing plan, to show to the people in this Republic what positive contribution they have made, and in the motion that they have written, and in the shallow soundbites that they have given tonight, they have not done that. And I think the public, and I think this crisis, and I think this doll deserves better than that. 
and the government is opposing this motion. Thank you, I want to entirely reject the motion of no confidence that has been placed in Minister Owen Murphy here tonight and instead express my full confidence in him. All that has been on display this evening is the repugnant attitude from Sinn Féin that would have them think that the only party that cares about the people who are homeless, that the only party who cares about people who are worried about how they're going to pay their next rent, people who are worried about the future of their lives, if they're going to have a roof over their head, is Sinn Féin. No party in Doyle Éireann has a monopoly on compassion. No party in Doyle Éireann has a right to claim that they are the only party that understand the needs of those who are the most vulnerable. What Minister Murphy has done in his time in office is steadily address a complex issue that has searing social and personal consequences for citizens. As a result of his actions, we are seeing more homes being built. We are seeing more planning permission being given. We are seeing housing hubs being delivered. We are seeing those who would face the trauma of being homeless being offered solutions that can make a difference to their lives. Under his leadership, in the Department of Housing, Planning and Local Government, we are seeing him deliver a plan which can and is making a difference. Of course he acknowledges, of course we acknowledge on the government benches that more needs to be done. Of course we hear the cries of those who worry about their future. But the way we will respond back to that is the same way this government responded back to the economic crisis. It is the same way we have responded back to many difficulties that Sinn Féin claimed were impractical, that Sinn Féin claimed that no progress could ever be made on. We will make progress on them step by step, week by week, and in so doing, offering real solutions to citizens, as opposed to insulting them, using their anxiety and using their worries about their future for political gain. All that Sinn Féin cares about in this motion here this evening, Ciam Corla, is Sinn Féin. All Minister Owen Murphy and this government think about in our efforts is trying to provide homes, trying to deal with the scourge of homelessness and trying to ensure that citizens who need help and who need support are given us. Ciam Corla, the lack of housing supply is clearly the deepest scar in our society left from a dark and painful economic recession. It's real, it's difficult, it's upsetting, and fixing it is a priority for the whole of the government and the whole of this country. But one thing is for sure. Minister Owen Murphy did not cause the housing crisis. Despite personalised nasty attacks from some on the opposition benches endeavouring to imply just that, the truth is that the housing crisis stems from failed policies of greed and mismanagement throughout Celtic Tiger Ireland. We must now rebuild our entire housing sector whilst not repeating the mistakes of the past and the devastation that those mistakes brought for so many. I've watched Owen Murphy over the last 16 months. His energy and his determination to fix this situation is second to none. But there is no silver bullet, there is no magic wand, there is no one measure. This is a hard slog and a real challenge and one we all need to involve ourselves in. Week in and week out, Minister Murphy is bringing forward proposals. Proposals to rebuild our housing sector, proposals to demand more action from all stakeholders, locally and nationally, proposals to increase supply and to reduce rough sleeping. He and the government are more than willing to work with the opposition on addressing this major challenge. In fact, there's an onus on all of us to work together on this, and I acknowledge some in opposition want to do that. Others prefer to call names, engage in procedural stunts like this ridiculous motion tonight, knowing that it won't build one house or home house one family, it is a real case of the worst type of politics. That nasty divisive politics that saw the rise of Trump, that saw Brexit, suggesting that your ideology is the only one and nobody else gives a damn. Owen Murphy cares about his responsibilities. He takes them seriously and it's a pity you don't take your responsibilities in this house seriously. As I said at the start, Minister Murphy did not cause this crisis but there is nobody better fixed to solve it. He will work day and night to ease it, to solve it. We'll stand shoulder to shoulder with him in supporting him and we'll stand shoulder to shoulder in opposing your ridiculous Stunt. 
Oh my goodness. Uh, well, I, I, I'd say absolutely brutally honestly, the, the solution to this problem is going to take five years. We've said that at the outset, and we have never seen a more innovative minister than Owen Murphy in tackling this. And I've seen Sinn Féin behave like this before. When I declared we were going to create 100,000 jobs, F Sinn Féin ridiculed every step of the way. Every measure we introduced was opposed relentlessly by Sinn Féin. You pretended to lament unemployment and emigration, but you offered only hollow solutions. You ignored enterprise, ignored mar market realities and offered people solutions that couldn't be sustained. Instead, we have a programme now that is going to deliver for people and you want to undermine it at this stage. The, the truth is that the, the Order, failure please. of our housing strategy was got to do with a debt fueled model that is not sustainable. This has to be rebuilt from scratch the way Owen Murphy is doing. And that's what he is doing. And I'm absolutely four square behind him. Thank you, Minister. My apology. Deputies, please. Please, can. can wait, no, please. Can we restore a little order, please? My apologies to Deputy Hayden. The time has elapsed. Uh, for the government. Now, Deputy Dar O'Brien sharing with Deputy Casey and Deputy Castles. Yeah, uh, Gurmagh the Count Corla, I share 10, 5 and 5 with my colleagues. I think the one thing this evening that we can all agree with is that Ireland is in the middle of a fundamental housing crisis. Homelessness is scarring our towns and cities. Tenants are struggling to make ends meet and to keep a roof over their heads. And young couples see the dream of home ownership slip further and further away. The crisis in this country touches every family in our state in one way or another. But the question today is not about the scale of the crisis or the impact it's having across the country. Fianna Fáil fully appreciate and understand the scale and depth of this crisis. We see it in our own constituencies every single day of the week. But the question today is a different one. The question being put forward is at its heart a simple one. Should Dáil Éireann bring down the government? Yeah. Ultimately, thanks Mick, no surprise there. Ultimately, I feel and my party feel that this would be a deeply irresponsible action. Collapsing the government weeks before the budget in the middle of delicate Brexit negotiations where the few... You could address your remarks to the chair, right. and if the Sinn Féin deputies could maybe try and restrain yourselves a little bit. Just try. Please, Just chair. try. Just try. As I was saying, now, collapsing the government the weeks government, before the, the budget. The government deputies might restrain themselves I, as well. Well, I think this is what people looking in will see this type of thing here. Well, maybe yeah. if, if we try to address the issues and come forward with some alternatives. Yeah, bring down the government. Negotiations in this island, where the future of our, 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 of our island is actually at stake. Any satisfaction and media headlines drawn from a dramatic vote would soon be replaced by uncertainty and instability. Our long-term future would be jeopardised for the sake of a short-term party gain. All the while, not a single further house would be built while political parties play political games. Instead, I believe we should take a more difficult but responsible path. That means providing stability during fragile Brexit negotiations and using the upcoming budget to put housing front and centre. Our party is focused on the business of practical steps to tackle this crisis. Given the depth of the crisis and the intensity of citizens' feelings on it, I believe that this debate is, however, welcome. The government is accountable to the doll, and each TD has a responsibility to ensure it does its job. But in a fragmented political landscape which has emerged in the last election, we also have an obligation to work for a stable government for our people. It means holding ministers to account, but also putting forward viable solutions and working to make sure they are implemented. The same old political game playing just won't cut it anymore. I do want to use the few minutes I have to outline areas where I believe the government has failed, but also, as importantly, what needs to be done to fix it. 
There is a core addiction to spin and announcements over hard work and delivery at the heart of government housing policy. Since 2011, there have been six separate housing plans announced and countless sub-plans re-announced. That's more than the numbers, number of houses built in 16 local authorities where not a single new social housing unit has been built so far this year. Rapid build units were hailed as a quick fix solution, only to cost much more and to take as long, if not longer. Repair and lease, as the Minister alluded to, has delivered just 15 units out of a promised 800. Affordable rental units were promised as far back as 2015. Not a brick has been laid yet. Some 7,000 units were identified by NAMA for social housing, but less than 2,500 transferred. Capital spending on social housing is still only 84% of its 2008 level. Only 20 million was added to an affordable housing scheme this year, with a target of just 500 units, and none have been delivered. It's a story of hype and under-delivery. Under it's clearly time for the government to recognise the gap between PR appearance and bricks and mortar reality. But people are interested in solutions and not political grandstanding. So the key question is what can be done? First and foremost, housing must be placed at the heart of the next budget. People are extremely angry and frustrated, as was demonstrated by the recent marches. They should not be condemned for protesting, as some, like the Taoiseach, have. We need to realise that people want solutions, solutions that are available to us. We can quantify the problem, therefore we can fix it. In May, Fianna Fáil put forward a comprehensive motion setting out the need for an affordable housing scheme. But the government and Sinn Féin, including Labour and Solidarity, banded together. I know he can't help himself. He, no, no, I know he can't help himself. Both the government and Sinn Féin, no, 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 together with Labour and Solidarity, no, no, voted to defeat. Would you just let the members contribute? You'll have your time. Well, we showed respect for their contributions and a little bit of courtesy. Maybe too much to expect from some members in that party. But the government and Sinn Féin and Labour and Solidarity joined together to defeat a motion that would have provided affordable housing for working people. But the facts scream out that intervention in providing affordable homes is needed. House prices have risen by 90% since 2012. Household incomes only by 7% in that same period. The average house price in the capital now stands at nearly €370,000, or 6.5 times the average household income. A comprehensive, fully funded, affordable housing scheme must be put in place in this budget to start delivering affordable units next year. We must open up home ownership to a generation struggling to own their own place. The state has a central role to play in that, and the budget 2019 must show real action on the issue. The state now needs to lead and show example. The market will not solve this problem. The state does need to intervene. The social housing budget must be increased to well above 2008 levels. The Rebuilding Ireland direct bill targets for 2019 need to be expanded and the housing first approach to tackling homelessness and addressing waiting lists needs to be prioritised. Stabilising rents and ensuring that there is sufficient flow of rental units available is vital to a functioning rental sector. Attracting and retaining landlords in the market must involve a fair taxation system. The budget should allow reasonable expenses to be deductible and incentivise long-term leases that provide certainty to tenants. A rental tax credit to alleviate the cost of meeting the monthly bill would go a long way to struggling tenants. Residential tenancies bill must strengthen tenants' rights and also expand supports to students. Away from the budget, there are a number of legislative and policy steps we should take. Fianna Fáil has published 10 pieces of legislation specifically addressing the housing crisis, more than any other party. The government must fully engage on these issues. In the area of social housing, rental sector and home ownership, there are further policy steps that should be adapted to get to grips with the crisis. We need to end homelessness and give hope to the 10,000 people and 4,000 kids who are homeless. It is a national scandal, and it can't be allowed to continue. And that's why I and Fianna Fáil have called for the establishment of a time-bound, focused task force to tackle child and family homelessness, get the stakeholders together, together and deliver solutions. In social housing, additional resources to assist homeless families must be put in place. Local authorities should be equipped 
to be able to deliver housing themselves. We must also look at the land holdings that we as a state own, over 3,000 hectares of zoned service land that could potentially deliver 114,000 houses. The Land Development Agency is a step in that direction, but we need that to be ex expedited. In the rental sector, regulating such accommodation platforms as Airbnb and Booking.com would open up more units while maintaining the character of residential areas. The cost rental model should be expedited and rolled out across Ireland. A national deposit scheme and quality accommodation certificate should be, uh, should be fully implemented. In the private sector, a rolling affordable housing scheme should be used to build tens of thousands of homes for working families and young couples to own their first home. We want funding set aside in this year's budget to establish such a scheme and to build on it year on year. A new SSIA type savings scheme for first time buyers to help them save for a deposit for a house should also be implemented. There are some, and these are some of the ideas that can help get homes built, take vulnerable families out of hotel rooms and give a generation back the dream of home ownership. But we have to be honest that motions like this do not build homes. Viable policies backed by financial commitment over years will address the housing price crisis. That demands responsible politics. Fianna Fáil is committed to responsible politics. Now is not the time for bringing down the government and causing a general election. I think all deputies know that deep down. Let's work to address the issues we have identified this evening and show real political commitment to action and not to grandstanding. There is common ground on what actions are needed to resolve this crisis. Let's get on with it and show that the Dáil and the people's representatives have the wherewithal, competence and ability to work together on what is a major crisis of our generation for the good of our people and the good of our country. Thank you, Deputy. Deputy Pat Casey, please. Thank you, Chairman Corla. There are aspects of our worsening housing crisis and the political management of this crisis that need to be called out tonight. I sincerely ask those whose job it is to report in this debate and indeed whose responsibility is to bring to the public attention the truth about the housing crisis to reflect on what is said here tonight. The statistics on housing and homelessness are grim and they are stated so many times that sometimes I think that the people are fatigued about the numbers. But behind every statistic is a homeless person, a family in a hotel room, a trauma that will cause scars that will take years to heal. We need to call out that there is a deep, cynical and negative politics of our housing crisis. By that I mean the political drama of tonight's no confidence motion, which exists for one purpose only, to exploit the real hurt to families caused by the lack of housing for the benefit of political parties who want to gain votes by feeding the politics of anger, the politics of despair, the politics of continual crisis. We only have to look at the ongoing destruction of the democratic politics in the United Kingdom and the United States to see how the politics of crisis and the politics of fear are frustrating what is the purpose of mature representative politics. The speeches and the dramas tonight are all about who gets the political blame, blame, blame and who garners the votes from the angry electorate. The politics of housing that are on display tonight are an example of what is wrong with politics and only contributes to the increasing disillusionment with politicians and the political system. That is not to say that the political system is working, far from it. But tonight we will not build a single home. We will not provide a single policy idea. We will not offer hope to the people who deserve it. Tonight is a failed tactic, a cynical ploy and represents everything I despise about politics. I sit on the housing committee which works together to painstakingly work through all the different aspects of housing from the chronic lack of social and affordable homes to the dysfunctional rental sector to problems with the planning and construction delays caused by bureaucratic systems that are out of control. In the two years I have sat on the committee, I have been impressed by all colleagues from all parties. 
and none in their commitment to working through these issues. The purpose of a mature democratic policy is to provide solutions to our problems. The solutions will involve trial and error. Inevitably, there will be compromise on deeply held principles, and often that will involve radical abandonment of sacred cows. Our housing crisis is solvable. I agree that it, it will not be fixed overnight, but I disagree strongly that this government is getting to grips with it. Personalised motions of no confidence and Trump-style outrage with sleek tweets designed to feed the news cycles <coughs> where the most colourful language is guaranteed coverage are not solving our systematic problems in housing. The adults in the room tonight need to call out this travesty out. It is the upcoming budget that will reveal if this government is capable of meeting the dramatic policy shift that is needed on housing. Whatever occurs over the next few months, the reality of the lack of housing and homelessness for the thousands of families and fellow citizens will grind on. The people elected everyone here to be adults in the room. The people elected us to hammer out solutions. They demand that politics works for the people and not for the cynical manipulation of voter sentiment. The keyboard warriors that hammer out the hate towards so many of us will never build the policies that will solve our political problems. It is time that all of us who care about our society to call out the politics of witch hunts, the politics of blame games, the politics of eternal crises. Our state, with all its power and resources, can provide housing for all our people. There are many worthy ideas from all sides of this House that merit debate and implementation. Policy solutions are where I am here. Let us get back to people's work. Thank, thank you, you, Deputy Casey. Deputy Jane Cassell's uh, comments. Thank you, uh, uh, Laskan Corlan. I welcome the opportunity to speak this evening along with my two colleagues on the issue that is dominating the public forums of debate in this country. I think what strikes me most, though, from all those discussions is the one thing that unites us, or at least should unite us, is a real desire among us all to deal with this issue. Because no matter what political badge we might wear on election day, the reality of homelessness, of the pressure of renting, and indeed the pressure of young middle-income families who cannot purchase a home due to the problems in the private housing market is something we all face on a daily basis in our constituencies. Our senior spokesperson, Darrell O'Brien, has brought forward proposals on an affordable house purchase scheme. Because while discussions surrounding the construction of social homes has dominated a lot of debates, I know from the people calling into my office, it is the issue of a proper affordable home scheme that could make a real difference in this debate. And the whole issue of social homes, or in good old plain English, county council estates, I recall when I was elected uh, to my own local authority nearly 20 years ago, along with Minister Damien English, and we both saw shortly after our election the extensive construction of council homes in our town of Navan and indeed many sections of Mead as well. And I mean real construction of actual estates with several hundred homes being constructed. And I do disagree with you, Minister Murphy, in terms of your philosophy and what you've said here this evening in terms of those estates, because more importantly, they were planned properly with the then Minister at the time, Noel Dempsey, ensuring funding was provided to build community centres in the heart of these uh, council estates, which today house many services, new swimming pools, schools, roads, infrastructure. It was a comprehensive package whereby there was a philosophy that drove our house building programme. And it wasn't just building homes, which did happen, but we were building actual communities. Now, somewhere along the way, that philosophy at both national and local level has been lost. So we need to see this government as a whole deal with that, indeed not just national government, but indeed local government as well. Just last Thursday at the Public Accounts Committee, we had some, some revealing and shocking statistics from the NAMA CEO, Brendan McDonough, who under the housing report they outlined how they had offered some 7,000 social homes to our own local authorities, yet only 2,700 were available. of. Some 60% were not taken up. Now that is shocking. And when further probed in this, Mr McDonough revealed that it was the housing agency who acted as the conduit, saying that the councils were not taking up homes because they didn't want, want what he termed an over-concentration of social homes homes in one area. Now I can only speak for my own county, but when we have over 4,000 people in our county on a waiting list, to hear that come back is simply not good enough from our own local authorities. And the fact that 4,300 homes could be simply let pass is just not on. 
On the private housing supply issue, can I say that the impact of the regional, spatial and economic strategy following on from the National Framework Plan is going to have a devastating impact on counties outside Dublin, such as Mead, Kildare, Westmead, Longford, Offaly, where population caps are going to come into force and actually thwart the housing market, the private housing market in particular, even further, leading to social housing problems as well. Finally, Ken Corla, listening to the housing debate this afternoon, during leaders' questions, <clears throat> I couldn't help but hear the cheap political dig from Deputy Mary Lou Macdonald from Sinn Féin, who accused Fianna Fáil of sniping from the ditches. I smiled, Can Corla, because around Mead, the only fellow you'd find sniping in the ditches would be their own Padar Tobin, and he has form. Because three weeks ago, Can Corla, we were all invited in my own constituency to the opening of 43 new council homes in the towns of Trim and Atby, where my own constituency office is based. So there we were in it by where Minister English was on hand to open 32 homes in a very fine scheme on Connock Street. And it was a great day for the families who received the keys to their new homes and it was a privilege to join them on the day. But where was Sinn Féin Deputy Pather Tobin when this moment of positive action was happening? Not in the estate. Oh no. No, no. I'll tell you where this guy was in the Sinn Féin party. I went 200 yards around the corner, Kian Corla, and there he was with a bundle of leaflets on the street in that boy handing out Sinn Féin diatribe and propaganda. He couldn't walk the 200 yards to meet the 32 families that got their Deputy keys that morning. So I find Deputy it rich Deputy that these guys come in here talking about the housing crisis when their own TD couldn't be bothered to walk the 30, 200 yards to see the 32 homes being opened. These guys do spin like it's going out of fashion. They do not have any sense of conviction you, and the example of Heather Tobin up. handing out propaganda in the street while 32 up. families were getting homes sums up. These guys are not fit for this chamber. Deputy Allen, Ke Deputy Allen Kelly, please. Deputy Allen Kelly. Uh, no. Enjoyed that. Um, Minister, um, the Labour Party will uh, not be supporting you tonight. Uh, we'll be supporting this motion uh, really because of ideological reasons. Um, we believe there needs to be a change in ideology in relation to how you're dealing with the housing crisis that we have. Um, this is not impersonal. In fact, I find I found some of the commentary in relation to yourself, uh, the personal commentary, I found it to be extremely distasteful and unworthy of uh, people who are in this house. And I want to say that my party will have absolutely nothing to do with it. Um, many people who come in here and speak on this uh, do so without going through what they would do and what proposals, and you challenged us in your contribution earlier. So I'd like to uh, address that and bring forward some proposals that we would have that would be uh, very much different. Uh, I'm not saying that your job is easy, but I do think fundamentally, even with uh, good work ethic, ideological change is necessary in order to put in place pathways uh, to deal with the issues that we all know uh, we have as a country uh, when it comes to housing. Uh, so my party has different proposals in relation to a model of delivery of affordable housing over five years uh, that has been fully costed that would deliver 80,000 units. And we would create a national housing development bank with uh, regional housing executives. And this bank would be given extensive powers, land, expertise and money, uh, resources from the Housing Agency, Housing Finance Agency, and indeed some resources from NAMA. And we've outlined this in great detail. And I think it would also create a differentiation between delivery and policy with the department, which I'm very familiar with. And I think it's something that needs uh, to happen. The 16 billion that we have proposed, 3.2 billion a year, is what is ultimately necessary in order to get to the scale of the issue that we're dealing with. And I urge you to think about that. Another issue which is something I'm very familiar with and something which does need to be addressed, and if it had to be addressed a number of years ago, and I'm speaking from experience here, is the whole issue of rent inflation. And our proposal, which came through here and was put forward on the floor here not so long ago in relation to CPI indexing rent inflation. I don't think the model in relation to managing rent inflation in the country in relation to rent pressure zones is feasible or will work because the whole country is under pressure. It was put forward with the best of intentions. 
but it's not working. And the CPI indexing, which should have been brought in a number of years ago, I would have had, a, had an impact uh, in relation to where we are as regards rents by now. So every year, and this issue in relation to what we're talking about tonight is going to go on for a number of years. Every year that passes by without this being done is going to make the situation worse. And that has very much been opposed for ideological reasons uh, by your party and by your government. In relation to a number of other issues, in evictions, we have to change the legislation. The process by which people are being evicted from their houses, uh, where uh, landlords or receivers are in place, needs to change and can be done uh, with a small amount of legislation. And I would encourage this to be brought forward as a priority. Uh, where tenants in those situations can, uh, through solutions provided, be left in uh, the premises, even if it is uh, being sold. I think we have a serious ideological issue in relation to, uh, and this is across the house going back long before I was even born, in relation to the non-implementation of the Kinney report, uh, in relation to land and land values. And ultimately here, the government that eventually bites the bullet and deals with the principles of that good report from 1973 will actually do the state a serious service. Uh, because the boom-bust cycle and the bubble that created the crisis in our country a decade ago, and elements of which we can see again now, is a result of that never being implemented in the first place. Uh, I also feel that uh, powers in relation to restructured local authorities, to CPO lands uh, that create economies with their own infrastructure are necessary. And this can be done whole scale, Minister, or it can be done in a limited way to facilitate local authorities who have infrastructure, who have capacity uh, to actually build more houses, uh, but aren't in a position to quickly acquire those lands. And even if you were to do that in a limited way and give local authorities small powers to do a limited amount of that, where it creates, where it makes sense, where there are economies, and I can think of it myself from my time in that role, I think, uh, I, I believe that it would have a significant uh, impact. In the limited time we've left, I want to deal with a couple of other issues. People ask about short-term uh, releases in relation to the crisis we have. We have to address the issue of short-term letting. And if I was going to stress one thing, Minister, in the coming weeks, we all talk about Airbnb, but it's not a case of just Airbnb, because they can call it something else the following week. We need to deal with it the way they're dealing with it in Barcelona, the way they're dealing with it differently in Berlin and in other jurisdictions. We're going to have to deal with this because it's creating downward pressures, lack of uh, capacity in urban areas in particular, which is only going to elevate this crisis. And the return, on the, uh, the return uh, for the people through short-term letting, uh, through the owners, isn't going to change, it's going to increase. So we need to ensure and there are ways in which we can do this, through the planning laws, because you actually have to have specific planning to be able to do short-term lettings. It's not enforced, though. So there are very quick ways in which this can be regulated. And I would seriously encourage you in this city and in other cities across our country to bring in regulations in order to address this great, greater capacity. I have a number of other issues, but I don't, I don't have time to uh, talk about them. I just want to uh, address a, a couple of other issues. The cost of building, it needs to be looked at. And I say this coming from a different ideological background. And I would encourage you to look at it in a sensible manner uh, as a short-term mechanism to ensure we can deliver more private housing across this jurisdiction. Because we have a crisis in relation to builders and building and getting loans to be able to build private housing across this country, which needs uh, some decisions to be taken very quickly. Uh, two other issues. Uh, uh, there's been a, a considerable amount of announcements in relation to various different schemes. I went through many of them that were put forward a number of years ago uh, across many different counties in Wicklow, in Fingal, in Kilkenny, in Leash, in South Dublin, in Westmead, Wexford, units up to 50 units 
uh, 36 units, 28 units, 29, 26 units, 39 units. It's all actually in a PQ you supplied to me after two months of asking. But all of these schemes have fallen by the wayside in relation to the provision by local authority once funding is given. There's too many schemes here that for different reasons have fallen through and haven't materialised. They need to be explained. There's too many of them, Minister, and we need an explanation after going through all that effort, going through all the stages in relation to getting them to the point where they're going to planning, that they actually fall through, whether it's with housing agencies you, Deputy, or it's with local time authorities. Is up, please. Thank Deputy, you. Um, Deputy, Boyd, Deputy McBarry sharing with Deputy Boyd Barrett. Whatever this house decides tonight, many of the people out there have already passed judgment on you and your policies, Minister. You need only look at the level of public support for the Take Back the City initiative to understand the level of public alienation from you, your government and your policies on this issue. The Taoiseach is no doubt aware, as he contemplates rolling the dice and calling a snap general election, that housing can emerge as the top, top issue with the potential to undermine his government severely at the polls. Minister, it's only a little over a year since you were appointed to your post. Since your appointment in my own city of Cork and the wider southwest region, the number of homeless people in emergency accommodation has increased 37%. The number of homeless children has increased by a stunning 55 per cent. I'd say I'm amazed, but I'm not amazed. The Minister comes in and criticises tonight large social housing estates. Well, I'd prefer to live in a large social housing estate than in a and b Minister, and so would a lot of other people. Now, on your watch, house prices have increased by over 6 per cent, rent rates nationally by 12.6 per cent. Half a million young adults live at home with their parents, unable to buy, unable to rent, they are the locked out generation. But of course there is good news for some. Only yesterday, good body stockbrokers forecast that Ireland's largest corporate landlord, RS REIT, will harvest 39.5 million euro this year in rental income. RS REITs doubled their profits for the first six months of this year compared with the same period last year. And Goodbody forecasts their rental income to increase by a further 14% next year. I could go on and give similar examples about HAP landlords and developer profits if I had the time. The wealthy few benefit on your watch, Minister, at the expense of the many. I must say a few words tonight about the Fianna Fáil position. Half a million people voted Fianna Fáil at the last general election. I suspect that more than one or two of them will not be impressed with seeing those deputies vote to keep the Minister in office. But of course, replacing you with one of your co-thinkers would make no difference whatsoever. We have no confidence in you, Minister. We have no confidence in your government. And we have no confidence in the housing for profit model also known as the market, supported by past governments as well, which have included not just Fianna Fáil, but Labour and the Greens as well. We need a different policy. We need public homes to be built on public lands. There is enough public land in the control of NAMA and the local authorities alone, already zoned residential, to build 114,000 homes. We need housing for people, not for profit. Minister. Your failure could hardly be more complete. It is time for you to step aside, but not just that, those toxic neoliberal housing policies must go as well. Minister Taoiseach, uh, this, this is not about you, it's not personal, it's about the failure of your government to break from a disastrously failing policy that is wrecking havoc on the lives of tens of thousands of our citizens. Uh, it's personal for them. And our feelings 
and our political differences are irrelevant compared to the hardship and suffering uh, that they are experiencing. We had two mothers today in the AV room burst into tears uh, during the showing of a film that some of them participated in about their experience and the experience of their children in emergency hotel and hub accommodation. Every Monday and every Friday in my clinic and in many other clinics, mothers, children, fathers, families, individuals come streaming in, traumatised, suffering, afraid, anxious, fearful, because they face eviction, because they have nowhere to live, because they have no prospect of getting a council house after waiting 15 or 20 years. The list of suffering and hardship and anxiety just goes on. Uh, and that is not an accident, Minister, it is to do with a policy that you have pursued. A policy that has now led us to a situation where we have 144,000 families on housing lists or transfer lists when there was 96,000, and that was bad, that Fianna Fáil gave you uh, when you came into power in 2011, where the number of families in homeless accommodation has trebled in the seven years that Fianna Gael have been in power, where we have 70,000 people in serious mortgage arrears who face the prospect of their home being repossessed, where students and young workers are paying extortionate rents by profiteering vulture funds and landlords and where a whole generation of young people have no prospect of ever being able to own their own home or even having a secure and affordable roof over their head. If a government can't deliver that, the most elementary thing, a secure roof over the heads of its citizens, that government does not deserve to be in office. Do we have alternatives? We have repeated them ad nauseum for the last seven years. Build council houses and affordable houses on public land. Stop evictions into homelessness. Use NAMA and its vast resources and land assets to provide public and affordable housing. Introduce rent control so you can't have profiteering rack renting. Uh, 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 and insert the right to housing into the Constitution as a basic human right. You have resisted those things because your government and successive ministers have pandered to the vulture funds and to the corporate landlords. Read this headline from the weekend in one of the biggest residential developments planned in this state. US investment firm poised to sell Cherrywood land, uh, and it goes on. US investment firm Heinz, who acquired a 412-acre site in Cherrywood in South Dublin four years ago for $240 million, are preparing to sell off large residential plots from that portfolio that would be capable of delivering 2,500 homes. Flipping land, making a fortune, and you've let it happen. You put public money into providing the infrastructure. They bought it at a song from NAMA, invited in by Michael Noonan, and you allow it to happen. Walking away with hundreds of millions in a profit and not a sod turned. Not a single house of any description, never mind affordable or social, delivered. That's what's going on. A small number of people that you have facilitated are profiting from the human misery being experienced by hundreds of thousands of Thank our you, citizens. That is not acceptable. And I just appeal to the public, come out on the streets next Wednesday Thank outside you, the door when this issue will be raised again. Time is up, Deputy. Deputy Mick Wallace now wishes to share with Deputy Connolly, Deputy Collins, Deputy Daly and Deputy Bruin. Thanks, uh, uh, Minister. Um, two weeks ago, Niall Cusson from the Department of Housing said at the Dublin Economics Workshop the state will not be building social housing at scale that's failed in the past. Well, you don't actually say that in here. Now, maybe, I don't know who's telling who or what, but uh, there's a serious lack of honesty in how you're dealing with the crisis. Uh, I don't think anyone would try and pretend that it's easy to fix, because it isn't. But uh, as I've repeatedly said, 
I think that you're listening to the wrong people. You're listening to people with a vested interest in it being the way it is. And I do think that uh, whatever pressure is under from uh, officials in the department or from people with a lot more money uh, than most, uh, I don't for the life of me understand why you haven't looked at a different avenue. I pointed out today to the Taoiseach, I mean, uh, your land development agency, NAMA's financing of, uh, of developers and funds, is presenting housing at about 100,000 a unit more than you could do yourselves. I know you have no faith in the local authorities, but why haven't you got the wherewithal to fix it? Why don't you actually address the fact that we are going to have a huge issue with affordability forever until some government actually deals with it? We introduced a, a tax where 25% would be imposed on land banking. But you know what? I don't believe you have an appetite for it. And I do think you have to change how you look at it, because you owe it to the people of Ireland. Uh, Carla, I've listened, I've listened two minutes, so I, I won't take a breath. Let me say I won't um, support any personal comments in relation to the Minister, but I have no hesitation in supporting this motion. I have been here just over two and a half years, and I've listened to three successive ministers. We had Minister Alan Kelly holding the fourth when I arrived in the Dáil, followed by Ms. Minister Coveney, and now yourself. And all three and have one thing in common. You utterly have relied on the market to provide and you've tinkered with that market and you've made it much worse. We have come in repeatedly and made positive solutions. Significantly, almost a year ago, I took part in a debate <coughs> on a motion tabled by Deputy Healy and begging you to recognise that there was an emergency, that business as it was wasn't working and to do something differently. I'm appalled, Minister Murphy, that you would talk about social housing as failed or big projects. That's not my experience, and I'm proudly one of a, a product of a local authority estate. But even leaving out my own personal feelings on it, I'm absolutely appalled that you would stand here tonight and make such a comment to justify your appalling policy of relying on a market that looks on a home as a commodity, something for profit. There are solutions. Recognise it as a basic human right a right to dignity, a right to a home. Enshrine it in our constitution. Use our public land to build public housing. Have the state pay a fundamental role in the market. And yes, give the market a role, but balance that. Stop insulting people with insults to Sinn Féin. Whatever your personal view of them, there's a serious emergency here, and we require a serious solution that you're not giving us. Kian Kola, there was a short film on today, it's been mentioned in the AV room, it was called Through the Cracks, and it showed the effects this scandalous situation has on our children and their mothers. I couldn't make it, I was at a committee, but my PA went over and it very much affected him. And he said that every single TD on that side of the house, Fina Gale and the Independent Alliance, should watch that should actually watch it because it really exposes how the impact of this housing crisis is having on families. We can call this a crisis, we can call it an emergency, I call it an absolute scandal. Whatever way you look at it, at the figures and what's happening or not happening, it is simply scandalous. 180,000 vacant houses nationwide, speculators sitting on development land, local authorities and state companies holding 70% of all zoned land, enough to build in excess of 110,000 dwellings, enough to build 70,000 dwellings in Dublin City alone. Young workers are spending up to 70% of their income on rent, completely unaffordable accommodation for students, over 3,000 children in emergency accommodation, and rising year on year, month on month, week on week. I can have no confidence in the Minister. He has failed to grasp 
the net nettle and radically change policy. But let's be clear, Minister Murphy didn't create this crisis. He inherited it from his predecessor, Simon, Co Simon Coveney, who inherited it from Alan Kelly, who inherited it from Fianna Fáil, and has been in place for the last 20, 30 years. The, the policy to abandon local authority housing, adopted by Fianna Fáil, Fianna Gael and Labour and Government, is at the root of the problem. Local authorities, dominated by the same par uh, parties, must, must share the blame. They were happy to offload the burden they viewed, uh, uh, they, that they viewed. There is a solution, public housing and public land, a mix of local authority housing and cost rental units with affordable rents and security of tenure. Until such a policy is adopted, finance and implemented, this scandal will continue. Is now of catastrophic proportions. I've been a public rep for 20 years and I've never had to give people the responses and the lack of hope that we've to give them now. Council staff are utterly demoralised and the Taoiseach tells us this morning that you're delivering houses. What sort of houses are you delivering? There's more houses being delivered in this city for €700,000 than there are for €300,000. Whatever chance two hospital consultants getting together might have to buy one of those houses, people on the average industrial wage certainly can't do that. Revenue tells us 8% of people have an income that would allow them, on the current lending criteria, buy an average semi-detached in Dublin. So who are you building these houses for? Where is the affordability for the vulture funds to come in and sell them and rent them back to people at extortionate levels? Minister, the situation is absolutely critical. You have commodified the right to shelter and I have no confidence in any of you. Deputy Bruin. Uh, thanks, uh, Cam. Well, as the Minister knows, um, the Dublin Bay North, the area I represent here, is uh, we have something like, I think, 5,000 individuals and families uh, on the uh, Dublin City uh, Council housing list, with another 2,500 on the transfer list. And when you add in that part of uh, our constituency, and I see uh, Deputy Bruton here, uh, we, we have, of course, uh, by far the worst uh, housing list in this country, uh, higher than any other county or uh, the whole of Fingal, the whole of uh, South Dublin. Um, and in in fact, Dublin City Council this year, Minister, as you know, uh, they've only delivered 330 new tenancies for a housing list of, of 26,000. Uh, the, the, the painfully slow, I think, and feeble steps you've taken, Minister, and your predecessor there beside you, uh, over the last two years, of course, you've done absolutely nothing to alleviate the suffering in my own constituency. Uh, you're still putting families with children into cramped hotel rooms nearly 18 months after Deputy Coven, and you might listen, after 18 months after you promised us faithfully that you would end this practice. You are still putting them into, hey, into hotel rooms, despite the fact that we know from so many st studies the damaging impact to children's development, nutrition and well-being. You have then forced the families into Deputy. hubs. There was supposed to be a six, uh, a six weeks turnaround. That uh, has not happened. And you're, you're to, to, uh, you refuse to adopt Deputy, any of the, the suggestions from this side of the House, including just going and declaring a housing emergency, freezing rents, having a real affordable housing scheme uh, and, and doing Thank something you, drastic, Deputy. in particular, about the situation in Dublin. You failed, Minister. Deputy you should Steve, go. And in up. fact, the whole Fine Gael party and indeed your Fianna Fáil oh. predecessors who embarked on this disastrous Steve. housing policy, you should be both banished from government for, for at least a generation. I'm grateful of the opportunity to speak in this motion to reconfidence in the Minister for Housing, Planning and Local Government. Minister, I pleaded with you time and time again that immediate action was needed to tackle the housing problem. The majority of those that are becoming homeless are from the private rented sector, and we all too are too well aware that rental prices are rising to unsustainable levels. It has nearly come to the point that renting can often be more expensive than paying a monthly mortgage repayments. I have many of my constituents from Kinsale right down through to Goldeen. The list is endless where people are unable to get on the property ladder and have to resort to paying huge, huge rents. I am aware of several shovel-ready projects in bigger towns in West Cork where there is planning permission given and there is no green light being given to these people who are willing to, to sell to the council, where they are still in these towns looking uh, for sites to, make, uh, to be made available, where planning permission must still be sought. There is a lot of political uh, shenanigans going on in West Cork, Minister, that needs to be looked at, and I certainly am looking at it uh, going forward. Minister, during the programme for government, we spoke about a rural resettlement scheme. Depopulation is a worrying trend in rural communities. I live in a community that eight businesses have been closed in the last three weeks in a constituency. Uh, in, in, throughout my constituency, communities do not stand still. They either develop or decline as the housing crisis in our towns and cities worsens. 
There was never a better time to actively promote the concept of rural resettlement. This scheme has been rolled out in County Clare. When, Minister, can we see the scheme being applied to West Cork? This is uh, not my first time, Minister, asking this question. Minister, there needs to be a plan put in place to source, build affordable housing in rural communities to enable urban-based families to move to rural um, areas through a re rural resettlement scheme. Minister, rural resettlement needs to be explored and promoted. It is time this government listened and took real action. If I saw real action, Minister, true action taken in, rural, in relation to rural resettlement, well then Minister, I might be able to stand here um, with some amount of confidence in you. Action needs to be taken to protect rural Ireland and those living here. Minister, in the last two weeks the Cork County Council passed a vote of no confidence in you and I know that this was not personal by them but any honest politician could not stand for what is happening here today and I will support my council with this motion also. Deputy. Well, I'm glad to be able to speak to this motion here tonight, and I'm appealing, I'm not looking past on either word, the Minister, but we're sick and tired of housing ministers, I think this is number six we have in the last uh, eight or nine years, and we have announcement after announcement, but nothing happens. And I do welcome the Minister, I was down in Tipperary last Thursday in Clarmel, and turned the sod for 26 uh, units in Dink Connor, and um, I think the same sod was turned by Minister Kelly two years ago. How many times do you have to turn the sod? Get out and do the job, please, let the people have houses. And also, I happened to ask the builder that day, who I know quite well, a good company, Simonton Limited, uh, when is he starting? I'm waiting for the letter of offer. I wonder how long will he wait for the letter of offer? This is the games you're playing, Minister. You're playing games with people's lives, and it's very, very sad. You allow people to build out there. You have a budget coming up, and would be, it would be prudent if you, this time you would uh, put some kind of a tax and manners on the vulture funds and take away those, the, 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 the punitive charges that are on people in shops, in towns and villages who want to change back to living accommodation, but there's 15, 60 percent charges between council charges and, and the VAT. And we had this in the programme for government talks. We asked Minister Noon to do something with the VAT. Oh, couldn't give it to the builders. I said, why not give it to the homeowner, the people who want to do the business job work themselves? I have dozens of people in Tipperary who want to build houses in rural Tipperary, uh, young couples who have the way with all and thankfully have a site. They can't get planning permission. So it's the dog and the manger job. You won't do it yourself and you won't allow the people to build them. I don't know what's driving you or what philosophy is behind it, but you don't want to build the houses. And, but the, t the, the spinning and the spin is way too much for anybody to bear anymore. There's over 3,000 people on the list in Tipperary. And there's, uh, there's thousands more trying to get onto that list. And the houses aren't there. You must allow ordinary small builders to get out there. Force the banks to give them cash. You're blocking community banking in the post offices. They can't get the cash. They will prove, and they always prove, they'll do the work. And they won't, they're not rip-off merchants. They're not big developers. And the ordinary people then who have houses themselves, or who have sites themselves, want to build their own house self-built. You've that regulated out, out of all proportion as well. So we've all regulation and red tape and no, and no um, kind of... A, tangible supports to allow people, the simple things we need to do, not uh, you know, huge plans and rebuilding Ireland which has been a failure, and uh, just ordinary simple stuff and you have the budget to do it, and you have the negotiations for, for, for the program for government, or for the renewed program after that, the confidence and supply. Minister, I have a company in my area, I'm delighted to see they announced job, the job increases yesterday, Horizon Limited, steel frame company, they're building hundreds and thousands of houses in England, and they can't get accreditation, I believe they've nearly got here now, and those people want to do it, they can't do it, they're the entrepreneurs, and they should be left to it. Instead of take, remove all the red tape, allow it to be, I'm not saying slash regulations, I'm saying we have too much red tape, it takes too long for the department to approve uh, projects to come up from the council, you blame the council, the council blame them. I'm asking for years to get the county managers in each county in the room with yourself, Minister, and have this out. Who's blaming who? You're blaming the councils. Get it sorted, let the people have houses, and you have the budget to do it now as well. Go to Thank you very much, I'm glad of the opportunity to talk again on housing here to, uh, tonight. Um, Minister, I won't regard you or, or, or be personal with my contribution. Uh, unfortunately, he blamed the local authorities, and I believe wrongly so. 62.5 million was promised in 2015, not by you, by your predecessor, the same party, practically the same government. 62.5 million was promised to carry in 2015. He didn't say how long, or how long to take for all that money to come, but I can guarantee you much of it hasn't come yet. Your department are actually slowing down local authorities, too many hurdles. Look, just look at Kerry alone, 10 rural cottages are to be built from 2016 to 2021. People providing their own sites, 
This is a fact, Minister. Johnny Ray uh, got the, the, the reply in a North motion at a council meeting the other day. I got it myself. Someone that wishes uh, to, to start now looking for a rural cottage will have to wait three years before somebody can come out to them because they just don't have the funding. That's wrong. Uh, demountable homes, which are all over Kerry for single farmers uh, where, where, where uh, they finish up, maybe their house isn't good enough to live in. We can get none of them now, Minister, in Kerry. None of them. Your teacher didn't know what I was talking about when I mentioned uh, uh, demountable homes. Uh, he, won't zone, he won't allow the local authority to zone enough land. And, and what's happening now is, you see, there's, so much, there's one piece of land developed here by a developer, and he has the monopoly to charge what he likes for houses that he'll build in that. There should be competition and zone. It, zoning doesn't matter, really. But it matters when we're, when we're looking for planning. But till the planning authority can decide how many houses will be granted. But it's wrong to grant it all in one side of town and allow one developer to have a monopoly. Um, the tin and purchase scheme. There's many people that have paid rent for their houses for 30 or 40 years, and just because they're in the pin uh, on the pension now, and, and they have savings, but because the tin and purchase scheme was part for a number of years, they are not allowed to buy their houses now. That's very unfair after they're paying rent for 30 or 40 years. They have the savings and they're not being allowed now because they're on social welfare and you have to be working for to qualify for the tenant purchase scheme. Thank you, Deputy. Re repossessions. There's no need in the world for repossessions because I asked you in the programme for government and different, at different times, allow the county councils or the local authorities to purchase these houses and rent them back for fair rent to the people right. the, and, Thank you, and to see maybe Time's they're up. getting their feet and, 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 up, Deputy, please. and, and have enough to buy the houses out again. Thank you very much. Now, Planning in rural areas, this is what you're saying in the 2040 plan, Deputy, that the, it will be granted if it won't attract from urban centres. That's very, very unfair and very Thank hurtful you, to people in rural Ireland. Uh, now we move to Deputy Eamon Ryan. You're sharing with colleagues, are you? Deputy Catherine Martin. Catherine Martin, uh, Deputy Michael Fitzmaurice and Deputy Seamus Healy. Two minutes right. each, if you can. Uh, like. Off you go. Um, we support this motion because we think our solutions to the housing crisis are better than your solutions. It's as simple as that. We want a site value tax to bring development back into the core. You're following an old-fashioned sprawl development model. We want better building regulations. You bring lowering apartment standards. We want a cost rental model to bring the price of rental property down. You're just pouring billions into HAP every year, which is a subsidy to, to developers. We want really tight, vacant and derelict site uh, charges. You want to give back the city not take it back. We want part five to be strengthened. You want to sell state land to private developers. We fundamentally disagree politically and that's what this vote is about. We don't trust your numbers. Taoiseach said today, oh, the numbers don't lie. Give you one example. Part five figures jumped supposedly houses built from 37 in 2016 to 522 in 2018, in 2017. But of those, 55 were second-hand homes in Dublin City Council that were never built. They were bought off the market. And 148 were long-term leases where we're leasing for Part 5, not actually building. So we don't trust your figures. We don't like the solutions. You stand for the status quo. We want change. I listened to you on Morning Ireland this morning um, and you were dismissing legitimate criticism as a stunt and you repeatedly, repeatedly claimed you were making progress. Well, I believe the numbers don't lie, but I don't take your numbers. Um, and I think they tell the real story, a harrowing story of four families a day becoming homeless. You talk about needing to solve the housing crisis, Minister, but your predecessors all said that it takes time. And we've been, we've been listening to that literally for years. Um, Essentially, this problem uh, uh, stretches way back, but one of the things that I think has made it really much worse has been, and I remember the night when it was introduced, uh, the housing assistance payment uh, legislation, which was uh, an attempt 
to uh, outsource responsibility um, and reduce housing waiting lists by taking people off the waiting list. We spend 900 annually subsidising landlords and, um, and homelessness services and that's projected to increase to 1.7 billion by 2022. Um, th that, is, uh, that is not a sustainable solution into the, into the future. I've listened to your numbers and we've disputed here in this chamber the numbers when the ESB connections were the ones that were used um, and they're not reliable and I repeat they're not reliable and I, I think it's accepted now that they're not reliable. Um, I know even if half of the numbers that you say of social housing were delivered, what would we be seeing every night on the television? We'd be seeing yourself or uh, um, uh, the junior minister um, out handing out keys and we'd be seeing families, we're not seeing them pictures because we're not seeing the delivery of the houses and it's taken a long f time for the, uh, the penny to drop, particularly with sections of the media, that a lot of what has happened here has been pure spin. This is not just down to you, Minister. I, I agree that it should not be personalised, but not only do I not have confidence in you, but I don't have confidence in this government or the approach of this government to resolve this problem because you won't listen to alternative approaches and there have been many alternative approaches put forward in this chamber over the, over the last number of years. I support the motion and I believe the Minister should go and he should take this government <coughs> with him. Housing is a fundamental human right and it should be enshrined in our constitution. Families need a stable, secure, long-term housing situation to live, grow and develop. The Fianna Fáil Progressive Democrat government handed over the public house building programme to the market, to the private market. That failed policy has been continued by successive governments since, by the Fine Gael Labour government, the last government, and now by the Fine Gael Independent Alliance government, even though it's absolutely failed. Uh, and of course, it has failed miserably and has been a disaster for families. Fine Gael has had uh, seven years to tackle the housing crisis. What all has happened is that uh, housing in all its aspects has been made a commodity uh, by successive governments and it has been made a commodity in a totally uncontrolled private commercial market. Uh, the current government has made the situation worse and the current minister has made the situation worse. We have now 10,000 people homeless with 3,500 children included in that, 100,000 families on local authority house waiting lists, 30,000 families on the despicable HAP scheme, thousands uh, couch surfing or living with relatives and friends, thousands more caught between a rock and a hard place, uh, over the limit for a local authority house, but not enough income for a, for a mortgage, rents still spiralling outrageously, uh, house prices still soaring, and a mortgage rate that's twice the European Union rate. The Minister has claimed, would you believe, that the government's policies are working. This is not only an example of reality denial, it is an insult to the victims of this so-called success, the homeless. The Minister should go and he should take this government with him. First of all, Minister, this isn't personal, um, but the reality of it is that it's chaotic out there in every aspect of housing at the moment. Um, and the worrying part about it is, no minister, in fairness to them, can click their fingers and build houses overnight. But the sad part is the figures that have come out over the last two years have been lies, lies and damn lies. And the people that gave you them figures, and this is, this is where I really have a problem, there has been no repercussions for the false figures that has come out about the numbers of houses being built and the number of social houses being built. Because anybody that checked them knows that there's huge, huge discrepancies. Figures were twisted, like turnkey, in, when you ask them the questions. They have brown sight and they have green sight. But at the end of the day, it's about what has been built and how families, or how many families, have gone into them. In the line of affordable housing, in the line of social housing, in the line of low-cost renting, in the line of people that are trying to buy out council houses, in the line of people that are trying to get a loan from the councils. Unfortunately, Minister, it has been a shambles, the whole lot of it, from beginning to end. You have advisers, 
Where are they in all of this? And at the end of the day, Minister, what I would say to you, I believe the person at the top has to call the shots. Nobody should keep getting a salary if they're not producing. And in my opinion, the people that give you those figures, those stats to read out, that basically embarrassed you down through the years, when you're the captain of the ship, you have got to replace the, some of the staff if they are not pulling their weight. But unfortunately, they keep getting the same wages whether houses are being built or not. And at the moment, out there, right around this country, especially in the cities, people are crying out for houses. You won't, as I say, have them overnight. But unless you change the system inside, the cover-ups that's gone on, the stats that has been given falsely you, to everybody, then you are in real trouble. Time is up. Thank you very much. Deputy Jonathan O'Brien sharing with Deputy Squinlevin, Kenny and Stanley. Thank you. Um, I have two minutes, so I'll cut to the chase. Um, just in relation to uh, Minister Donoghue, you said earlier that nobody on these benches had a monopoly on compassion or empathy, and I agree completely. And nobody on these benches believed that we do have that monopoly. But neither do you have a monopoly on solutions. There are solutions right across this chamber, but I honestly believe that you think that you do have a monopoly on solutions, and that is half of the issue in relation to this government. We need to stop people from entering into homelessness as well as have policies and building programmes to take people out of homelessness. We need to stop people entering it. And one of the rising reasons why people are actually becoming homeless, um, from the evidence coming into my office, is people who are in uh, rent and private, particularly HAP tenants, and landlords are giving them eviction notices. And the eviction notices are on the basis that they're carrying out major refurbishment works or they plan to sell the house within three months of them vacating the property. The reality is that the majority, in my opinion, and from my experience in Cork City, not all, but the majority of them, are actually using these loopholes to evict tenants. They have no intention of selling their property. They have no intention of family members moving back in. They have no intention of carrying out major refurbishment works. They are using it to get around your so-called rent controls. They are hiking up rents to astronomical prices, and people are being turfed out onto the street as a result of that. So if you were serious about addressing the reasons why people are entering homelessness, then address those loopholes which are being used by landlords to evict people and make them homeless. Oh Minister, Ireland's housing market is clearly not functioning at present. Minister, that's a quote from IBEC, and they, they along with other organisations, have a huge concern that this is affecting our ability to attract foreign direct investment. Not only has this government's housing plan failed, you have in fact made the situation worse. The housing crisis isn't some emergency that fell out of the sky. The housing situation is a result of choices. Your party has been in government for seven years now. Choices Fianna Fáil have made, have, have made to benefit the wealthy few at the expense of many. These choices have included the failure to build council and affordable houses, the consent for mortgages to be sold to vulture funds, the refusal to put rent freeze in place, the continued belief that your plan is working, and the sheer disregard you have for people in homelessness. Minister, since you be, became the minister in Limerick, uh, homelessness has risen from 278 people to 302, or 307 people. Rent prices have increased by over 21 per cent in, in one year, 71 per cent in the last five years. If Fine Gael or Fianna Fáil, for that matter, really wanted to help the thousands of Irish citizens who remain homeless tonight, they could prioritise these people over tax cuts in next month's budget. But neither of you will do that. It's the same choice we made last year. Money comes first, people come second. Minister, I wrote to you on the 19th of July, which I haven't had a reply to. My query resulted from being informed by Limerick Council on numerous occasions, and they said, and I quote, are awaiting funding approval from the department to revive houses. Minister, I estimate at present there are 70 such council houses, houses properties in Limerick that are either vacant or, board, or boarded up across Limerick. I have details of more than 40 of them here on this list. For instance, 55 Shanabuli Road, Balanenti, has been allocated to a family in, in February. They can't move in. 60 Cannonbreen Park in Tomigate was allocated to a family in March. They can't move in. It's not ready. 13 Lee Estate is boarded up for two years. 65 Scanlon Park in Castle Connell Village, boarded up for a year. Minister, these are in areas where families would love to live. I know that because I meet these families all the time. 
Whilst there is vacant homes in Limerick, there are also 85 families in the Midwest region, the bulk of them in emergency accommodation in the city. It gives me no satisfaction, Minister, to seek the removal of any government minister, but as the real opposition party here in the Dáil, I'm proud that we call out this appalling failure and standing up for the interests of the Irish people, and especially for those people in Limerick in desperate need of secure housing. Thank you, Ken Corla. Uh, Minister, there is a housing crisis not only in Dublin but across the entire country. And in, in my constituency in Sligo Leitrim and across the whole west of Ireland, we see it ha every day. But here in Dublin, we meet it in its, in its most extreme. And I, earlier on today, I heard you saying how there were houses been built and that there were cranes up and there were people working and building was happening. Building is happening in a certain type of housing, housing for the very wealthy. Housing for, a people, for, for the people who can't afford that, there's no housing for them. There's blocks of accommodation for students, students that can't afford it at €1,000 a month. That's the kind of housing that's been built, not the type of housing that we need to see to provide homes and shelter for ordinary working people who are going out every day and trying to get on in life. The, the process of no confidence in a minister is a long established process in this house and in every parliament in the world as to how to highlight a situation and to hold the minister to account. It is not a stunt. It has been used by your party and by every other party in this chamber for years to do so. And to call it a stunt is an absolute disgrace. The fact of the matter is, Minister, that the private market the private market is the way you want to go, but the private market will only provide for the social need in the most extreme situations. Normally, it doesn't provide for it. And I've seen examples of that even in my own area very, very recently. It's not only in urban Ireland, it's in rural Ireland as well. And Minister, when you have failed to such an extent, it is time for you to, to face up to the reality and step aside. Gormaigov. Uh, thanks, Ken Corla, and I welcome the opportunity to speak on this motion. I have to say, Minister, that, that in the past, housing was seen as a, social, as a basic social need. Between 1932 and 1950, between a third and half of all housing built was social housing. In the bleak 30s, there was 38,450 houses built. And in the hungry 50s, 52,000 houses were built. And in the 70s, things weren't exactly booming because of the oil crisis and everything else. There was nearly 62,000 house, social houses built. So it put that into context of a smaller population and less money being available to the state at the time. But what, we have no programme now, we have no fast programme now for getting houses uh, moving, but we have a snail's pace process. And what I want to say to you, Minister, and I've said this to you in the Chamber and outside it in the past, here is part of the problem, the approval stages for local authority construction housing. And I want to highlight this one issue to you again this evening. There are a total of four stages in it, but within that there are 19 stages. And at stage 11, where it says scheme design drawings be supplied, Right. Leash County Council, the Cunnaburry Way, where there's 34 houses, you come down and you open them, and those 34 houses are welcomed. Right? But that scheme, 120 drawings were exchanged between your, your department and Leash County Council before that got approval to go on to the next stage, to stage 12. And I said to you before, you need to go over to the department. Well, of course, well, I, what I want you to do is to leave office, which whoever follows on from you, to go over to the department, to the customs house, and sort that out. That's what the government needs to do. That is slowing up the whole process. And in the minute that I have left, if you take an awfully, there are 1,701 households on the waiting list. In Leash, there's 1,575 households. That's what's happening. 260 people presented as homeless in Leash. Uh, so far this year. Rents in Leash have increased by 13.1% in one year alone and almost 12%, 11.9% in Offaly. And the criteria for social housing, a street cleaner with Leash or Offaly County Council with a large family cannot get on the housing waiting list in each county. Why? Because the threshold is too low. It's cut off at €500 Euros a week uh, and if you have four children, 29000 per year income. That's the situation. Sinn Féin have put forward alternatives such as Dublin Capital Investment, rent freeze, affordable housing, relief for, tax relief for renters. That's the type of process that we need here. And you haven't done that, Minister. Yes. Minister, is it any wonder that today you are facing a vote of no confidence, and by extension this government? Your government, with the collaboration of Fianna Fáil, has been in power for nearly three years, and prior to this, from 2011 to 2016, Fine Gael was in power with Labour. Fianna Falls were, were the architects of this crisis, so it's no surprise that they have indicated that they will abstain in this motion of no confidence. Fianna Fáil are equally complicit in this house.
housing and homeless crisis, through the so-called confidence and supply arrangement, Fianna Fáil remains fully committed to this government's failed policies, going so far as to not even supporting a motion declaring a housing emergency. Fianna Fáil has no credibility and oozes hypocrisy when it comes to housing. Minister, you can't use the excuse of being in the job for 18 months and asking us to give you a chance. This government has had its chance for years and failed. You are the continuation of this failure and neglect. Under your watch, the homeless and housing crisis has exacerbated. You have failed in your self-appointed targets. You have failed in your commitments. You have failed in the delivery of affordable and social housing. You have stood over massive rent and unsustainable house prices. How can you justify 100,000 people being on the housing waste waiting list? How can you justify 10,000 being homeless? How can you justify 4,000 children being homeless, living in hotels and B&Bs? The number of families becoming homeless has increased by 24% since July 2017. One in three people who are in emergency accommodation is a child. This homeless crisis is creating a lost generation. Children are being traumatised on a daily basis. This is one of the hidden costs of homelessness and the housing crisis. The human cost has been enormous due to your failures. Minister, how can you justify schemes like Odebony Gardens, waiting 15 years for development, Dominic Street, waiting 12 years, North King Street, waiting 5 years, Croke Villas, waiting 10 years, PPP is promised but still still on the shelf somewhere. Behind the, all these failures and statistics are families and children from an uncertain and dysfunctional future. Your failed policies do not just destroy futures, they destroy families and lives. Thank Minister, you. you revealed your hands when you said you were opposed to the building of social housing. Deputy, Let me tell you something. I come from social, large scale, Deputy, large scale housing up. estates. I come from Please, social Deputy. housing. Some of your own party come Deputy, from it. The vast majority the of people up, were Deputy. born in social housing. You should cop on Deputy, and realise the seat. only answer is the building more social and affordable seat, housing. Please. please. Now, um, the government pleased Minister Charlie Flanagan, sharing with Ministers Doherty, Ring, Griffin, Phelan and English. I am very pleased, Kian Corla, to express full confidence in Minister Owen Murphy. Sinn Féin, with characteristic hypocrisy, seeks to personalise a highly complex problem, the causes of which are well known to everybody. The goal here this evening is to inflict maximum political damage and feed a myth that one person alone can either solve or create a crisis. As always with Sinn Féin, the rhetoric of their spokespersons at national level is contradicted by the actions of their foot soldiers at local level, where they have a history of opposing housing proposals. Given, given, this personal, given the personalised attack on Minister Murphy, I want to state on the record. I know Owen Murphy very well. I can attest to his work ethic, which is incredible. His commitment 24-7 to resolving the housing crisis. In his actions to seek a resolution, Minister Murphy, Minister Murphy takes a multifaceted strategic approach that is already steadily yielding dividends. I strongly support his responsible approach to long-term planning, representing, as I do, the County of Leash, I feel I can speak with some authority about the consequences of poorly thought out housing policies. During, during, the, so -called, during, the, so -called, during the Celtic Tiger years, thousands and thousands of houses were built all over Leash. Houses were built on floodplains. Houses were built on the edges of villages. Fields of houses appeared everywhere and Leash didn't have the infrastructure to cope and Deputy Stanley knows this better than anyone. When the economy went over the cliff thanks to Fianna Fáil, our county was littered with ghost estates. We are still, we are still playing catch up with school places and hospital beds and other vital services. I applaud Minister Murphy for visiting my county on numerous occasions at several times. He's well aware of the terrible mistakes of the past. I was here in this house during the years of the Celtic Tiger. I remember the crazy policies of Fianna Fáil introduced. I remember the high price we paid for populism and chaos. We owe it to the people of Ireland to learn from the mistakes of the past, and Minister Murphy absorbs the lessons well. 
The housing problem demands constructive approach and engagement from everybody in this House, from all sides, not cynical political opportunism of the type we're seeing from Sinn Féin. I reject the cynical motion. Thanks, um, Count Corla. The empty vessels of Sinn Féin have spent months attacking Owen Murphy. They've personalised their housing attack on the Minister and they've consistently threatened this stunt that we're witnessing here tonight of the motion of no confidence. Every time there was a slow news week, they'd roll out this new chestnut. Well, here, here we are tonight seeing the hypocrisy in action um, of Sinn Féin. They have no solutions. The motion has no alternatives to rebuilding Ireland. They call only for the introduction of a new housing plan. When where is their plan? We're still waiting. And we know they've no plan here because they've no plan where they were in government in the north of Ireland. And they continuously name check and get it incorrect, which is not unusual for Sinn Féin, the numbers on the actual housing waiting list in the Republic. And I do so, Count Corla, only to show the sheer hypocrisy of the people to my left. The population of the Republic of Ireland is 4.8 million. And yes, we have 80,000 people on our housing list and it's too high. And yes, we have 10,000 people who are homeless and it's too high. But in Northern Ireland, Count Cullen, there are 49,500 people on the waiting list for a population of 1.8 million. There are 11,889 men, women and children homeless in the North, where Sinn Féin ran from power. Count Corla, when Fianna Fáil... Please, please, I have to insist that the Sinn Féin deputies allow the Minister to speak without interruption, please. Truth. Ken Corla, when Fianna Fáil were acting responsibly in 2016 and supporting the minority government that was established, Sinn Féin went to the cinema because they have no plan. The hypocrisy knows no bounds. Sinn Féin have no policy except hypocrisy. They call for houses to be built as if they had magic beans. Well, your magic beans didn't work in Northern Ireland and your hypocrisy and policy of spin will not work down here, lads and ladies. Get your act together. Bring forward a policy and a plan that actually would potentially be an objective to what we're in. Instead of the stunts that you're so used to, hauling the, the doll to the... Um, to, to a stop a number of years ago when Mary Lou put everybody uh, out of here for hours and this kind of wasteless, needless time when we really have work to be doing. You're pathetic. Proceed any further. Can I just ask if the ministers responding to the debate will address the chair? You're provoking the Sinn Féin deputies by you're provoking you're provoking the Sinn Féin deputies by speaking directly to them. So as a proper as a proper parliamentary tactic, please address the chair. And can I again ask the Sinn Féin deputies to behave responsibly, please? No, no, no point of order. Re resume your seat. Resume your seat, please. Resume your seat, Minister. Resume your seat, Minister. Resume your seat. Minister Ring, please. Thank you, Ken Kola. And Ken Kola, I'll try and I'll upset them on this side of the house. <laughs> Because I know they're very sensitive and you know they, they don't like to be criticised. I stand up here tonight as somebody that came from a social house. I came from a place called Feather Angeles Park, very proud of it. First child born in it, 40 houses, and out of that estate came the finest quality of people. Tonight, Minister Murphy, I came here to support you. And again tonight, they tell us that you don't support social housing. Yes, you do support social housing, and you have supported social housing. I've heard you in the Cabinet. Well, well, you... Well, Deputy Ellis, Deputy Ellis, would Deputy Ellis, Ellis you please... We will have no bullying now from you. No bullying from you now. No bullying from you now. Deputy, would you please respect... Would you show... Sorry, sorry, would you show... Please, Minister, would you show some respect for the Doyle? Would you show some respect for the Doyle, please? Minister. Sinn Féin's answer for everything. They have an answer for everything, but no solutions. Do you know, you collapsed your government in Northern Ireland. You wouldn't go into government in the South. You won't re represent the people that want to represent you in, 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 in the House of Commons in relation to Brexit. What are ye elected for at all? Ye don't want to take part in any conversation. Ye don't want to take part in government. 
Minister Murphy has taken part of this government. And if you remember, if you remember two years ago, this side of the House could have formed a government. But you cannot take part and be out there protesting against everything. And that's what this side of the House does all the time. Protest, protest, protest. This minister is, pro is providing solutions. And as far as I'm concerned, Minister Murphy, I see the way that you work at Cabinet. You're interested in the problem. You're working on the problem. You're going to solve the problem. It's not easy. It's difficult. There's a lot of people out there tonight hurting. There's a lot of people out there tonight homeless. And this motion ye put in here tonight to get rid of a good man that's doing the best job possible. And all your answer is ye walk out of government in the north, ye walk out of government in the south, and ye won't represent us in the House of Commons when we need ye most in relation to Brexit. So if you haven't got a solution, keep your mouth shut because protests won't build one house in this country. Mr. Griffin. I'm added because of the interruptions from the opposition. Well, no, the I do want to say, though, Count Carla, it absolutely clearly is personal when so many members of the opposition are saying it's nothing personal. We all know it is personal, and it is personally directed at Minister Murphy. I want to concur with my colleagues here in these benches about the efforts that have been made to resolve this huge crisis that we have, and this problem that we have, and this massive challenge. But at least we are rising to address the challenge, unlike the people over there, Count Carla. So sometimes I wonder, is it this? Parliament, or is it the Parliament in Westminster that you're actually abstaining from? Because your contribution to both houses is equal, equally useless. And you know what? In the history of this state, you have never, ever, ever built a home. You've only ever torn homes apart. That's all you've ever done. That's all you've ever done in relation to homes in this state. And while I welcome Sinn Féin taking the parliamentary avenue to try to take an opponent out, and that's welcome for Sinn Féin, I think that this is absolutely a political stunt. And it will do nothing to help to the people that we're actually supposed to be helping, who are the people who are seeking homes, the people who are in emergency accommodation. You are doing nothing as an opposition to help. You are being purely political. And if you cared about the people who you're supposed to care for, you wouldn't be turning on Owen Murphy now, the same way that you turned away from government in 2016. Because, obviously, the housing crisis wasn't as important as your own political interests at that time. And it's the same in Northern Ireland. The figures up there are astounding, are shocking, and you've turned your backs on those people shamelessly as well. Sinn Féin wants us to believe that they can take 10,000 people out of homelessness, yet they couldn't even manage to get 10,000 signatures out of Antrim. That's what we're dealing with. And now you're trying to... You're after a head now. You're after a head. It's in your nature to go after heads. But you're going after the head of Minister Murphy, the hardest working politician that I have come across since I entered the gates of this House almost eight years ago. And it's completely political and it's shameless. But there's one statistic. We've heard the last statistics here tonight. There's one that stands out most. 14%. That's the statistic. That's your rating with Red Sea. And it's one statistic that Deputy MacDonald absolutely obsesses about because after only a few short months she is a huge disappointment. Panic is starting to set in and the response to that panic is this motion, this shameless motion. The pressures of government obviously would not suit Sinn Féin if this is the way you respond to the pressure of an abysmal poll Thank rating. You very much, we are determined to solve this problem. Time let us get on with the work and let the time wasters be found out. Thank you very much. Now, Deputy Sean Crow sharing with Deputies Ferris, Doherty and Cullinan. Uh, Good morning. Um, there's been a lot of talk about it being personal. And for me, the housing crisis is personal. Uh, I know people that are sleeping in cars. Yep. I know people that are living in sheds. Yep. I've come across people sleeping in doorways that I know. Yep. I know people who committed suicide when they lost their home. Right. Uh, three days ago, I got a letter off a woman who said she was going to commit suicide. The minister got the same letter. People in Piazza House got the same letter. So for me, it is personal. It is personal, and I do want solutions, and we have put forward solutions. But only a fool would suggest that your measures are working. I can go through the statistics. Everyone has done them tonight. The figures are there. We have a broken system. We're not delivering for people. We're not delivering for people that are on housing lists. 
Those who are in rented accommodation, the rents are going up. It's not sustainable for people. People who were nearly guaranteed to be able to afford a home, the likes of guards, uh, nurses, teachers, they can't afford a home. So who are we building the homes for? Are they for landlords? Are they for vulture funds? The system is not working. So that's what we're saying. So there are solutions, but Minister, you are not delivering them. Today I got a letter, uh, letter from uh, a councillor in, in Dunleary Rathdown. It's not my area. But he's saying that uh, the Minister is blaming everyone, you're blaming the councillors, right? He's saying that Dunleary they put a proposal forward for 540 new social and affordable housing uh, to deliver do, do, on a site uh, in Shangan Castle, the, low, the, the prison site. It's eight months since that particular local authority applied to your apartment for one stage of approval. Eight months on, that approval has not been granted, despite it being the biggest council led housing uh, scheme across the state, which has been backed by 40 councillors. So there's a problem there, Minister. You're not delivering a relation to that. You're talking about hubs. We, I, I have, we have hubs in our area. But the problem is that people are going into the hubs, they're going into the hotels, but they're not moving, they're not moving out of them. The housing is not being delivered, Minister, on the ground. Now, I don't know what people are telling you. I don't think the people that are sitting behind you are gobshites or fools. They know what's going on. If they don't know what's going on, there's something wrong. There's something wrong if, the, if you don't realise what's going on in your communities and what's going on in this country. So we're all affected. You're affected, I'm affected, and everyone else in here is affected. So we have to come up with solutions, Minister. But you're not delivering, and that's why the motion is being put tonight. Deputy Ferris. Deputy Ferris. Hello, Margaret. Uh, tonight, as we sit here comfortable in this building, 145 of my constituents 109, 109, 109 adults and 26 children are sleeping in hostels and b and 16 families are in emergency accommodation because they can't find home. Another 13 families can't find rented accommodation as they are currently in transition uh, properties. You have 3,687 people applying for social housing in Kerry. Another 1,000 are on the transfer list and between January and June of this year, 517 new social housing applications were made, and by the end of this year, we could have over 4,000 applicants on the Kerry County Council Housing List. This figure doesn't include RAS or leasing schemes. And I'd ask the question that Minister Griffin attacked us here across the floor. Minister Griffin, you're aware of what's on the housing list in Kerry. You're aware of the circumstances in Kerry. And you try to tell us here to, tonight, to tell this chamber here tonight, that you're dealing with the, with the problem. That, right, dealing with the problem. Uh, how, many, how many houses did Kerry County Council build last year? Can you tell me? How many houses did they build last year? They built five houses. Five houses were built in Kerry out of 4,000 on the housing list. And you come in here and you attack Sinn Féin for bringing a motion against the minister, against your government, because you have failed. You have failed the ordinary people of this country. You have failed the 4,000 people that are on the housing list. You have failed the 100,000 people that are on the housing list. And you come in here with your garbage. And I listened to Shane Mackin here tonight, and he talking about a photocopy with his gob on the front page of the paper, and he castigated Deputy Patrick Torbin because he wasn't there to have his photograph in the paper. Instead, he was out helping a constituent that is in Marcus difficulties because he was doing the right thing, not worried about his puss on the front page of the paper. And I tell you, Mr. Deputy Minister Griffin, attacking us for doing the right thing, I would much prefer to be standing here in opposition, attacking you and holding you to account because that's what must be done. This government has to be held to account and you're propping them up and continue to prop them up. You're an absolute disgrace but you're no different than what you ever were. Well, that's all you ever were. That's the very thing I can say. Deputy Cullinan, please. Uh, can call it a stock response from the Minister and all of the Fine Gael speakers has been a sense of how dare ye how dare those of us on this side of the House hold you to account? How dare we uh, hold you to account for your failures? How dare we speak for those children who are stuck in homeless accommodation, for those families who can't afford to buy a home, for those families who are stuck paying high rent? Well, you might not, you might, might not like it, Minister, but we are the main opposition party. 
and our job is to hold you to account because Fianna Fáil certain, certainly won't uh, do it. The housing crisis did not happen by accident. The reason why we have high rents is because you, Minister, failed to intervene in the market. The reason why people can't get a social house is because your government is not building enough social houses. The reason why people can't get, can't get an affordable home and can't afford to buy homes in Dublin or elsewhere is because you are not building affordable homes. And what you need to do is take responsibility, Minister, not blame Sinn Féin, not engage in the name calling because we were being accused of personalising it and then we were being accused of hypocrites and of stunts and of political games and of being cynical. In fact, it is the people on that side of the House who are cynical and ye are the ones who are uh, playing political games, in my view. You said we had no solutions. Well, here's the solutions. Social housing document produced by Ono Brin, reforming the private rented sector, review of the tenant purchase scheme, a vacant home strategy, uh, the true level of homelessness, uh, regulation of short-term letting, our last, last year our capital plan for housing in our alternative budget and more importantly the all-party report on housing that happened at the behest of Sinn Féin where experts came in, spent hours and hours talking to politicians about the solutions and you can't even implement this report. You can't even implement what was agreed by all parties. So you have a brass neck, Minister, to say that we should not do our job. You are in your job, you're kept in your position because of Fianna Fáil, who are the developers' party. Your party is a party that represents a cosseted, privileged class. And I'm proud that I'm a member of a party that represents ordinary working people who are the victims of your policies and the housing policies which have failed so many people. And of course you should resign. Deputy Pierce Doherty to conclude, please. Minister, before I came in here earlier on today, I watched a, a little programme uh, that's online, and you should watch it. Uh, it's about a, a number of families who have been in homelessness, and I was struck by three young children, about the same age as my own children, Emily, Alana and Glenn, and they talked about their desire, their desire to have a house. And the programme talked about where their mothers were at, where their parents were at, how they were working all the hours they could get, how the landlord increased the rent, and how they had no option. Uh, but to leave that place. And because rents were skyrocketing, they went into homelessness. How in another situation, a landlord sold the house and evicted them into homelessness. And as we're sitting here at 10 o'clock at night, we're reminded that there's 4,000 children that are being tucked into bed, being put to sleep tonight in emergency accommodation. 10,000 people in total. And that's what this is about. It's emotional confidence in you. But it's about people like Alana, about Emily, about Glenn, and the thousands other like them. And this didn't happen by accident. This wasn't a, a, a crisis of, 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 of mother nature. This is a direct consequence of the policy decisions that you as a government have taken over the last number of years. It is very simple. If you decide not to invest in social and affordable housing, if you do not meet demand, then you will have a housing crisis. You will have children like Emily and Alana and Glenn and thousands other without a home, without a roof over their head and having to endure emergency accommodation. And we heard about the social impact and the long-term impact that that will place on those children. And the social contract is broken because these people have done nothing wrong. Their parents have done nothing wrong. They have tried to better themselves. They have tried to do, as any parent would do, the best for their children, to protect them, to make sure that they are protected from the ravages that the world can throw at them. But it is you to let them down. Because you, time and time again, when your partners in Fianna Fáil decided, budget after budget, not to prioritise and invest in social and affordable housing. Deputy, Instead, what they did, can call you, is they gave tax breaks to banks. Downtown they gave tax cuts it. to the elite and the highest earners in society. And that is what's happened. We have given you policy after policy, double investment in social and affordable housing, implement the Focus Ireland amendment. Why would anybody Thank in Fianna Fáil or Fianna Gael not support an amendment that, does it, that would stop landlords that benefited from tax breaks from this state evicting families and their children into homelessness? But well, that's what you have done. Up, and that is why I have no confidence in you, Minister. That is why our party has no confidence in you. That's why I believe the people have no confidence in you. And you should do the right thing and resign. And Fianna Fáil Thank shouldn't you, sit Deputy. in their hands Time in this one year. They should stand up and be counted on this issue. Thank you very much, Deputy.
That concludes our debate on the confidence motion. The question now is that the motion as proposed by Deputy Owen O'Brien be agreed to. I believe the question is defeated. Vote all.
Item number 210. Motion regarding confidence in the Minister for Housing, Planning and Local Government. The question is that the motion be agreed to, and on that question a division has been challenged. Pillars Thaw, Deputy Angus O'Snoddy, August Denise Mitchell, Neil Chachty, Joe McHugh, August Tony McLaughlin. Forty-nine, Neil, fifty-nine, for butcher and kest, August Ta on ruin, uh, Kyle Yes, Deputy Osnoddy. Given that uh, there was a substantial amount of blue voters, uh, I think we need to give them a special chance, maybe that they can reflect again, and that we vote by means other than electronic. <laughs> vote by. A manual vote will now proceed. The clerk will ring the bells.
Would members please proceed to the lobbies as the vote will be, taken, uh, will be taking place shortly. Item number 210, motion regarding confidence in the Minister for Housing, Planning and Local Government. The question is that the motion be agreed to and on that question a division has been challenged. Teller Saw, Deputy Zangles of Snowdy and Pierce Dar and Denise Mitchell, Neil, Deputies Joe McHugh and Tony Midlock.
Paul, 49, Neil, 59. There were 29 abstentions. Tabuche, Er, on Kesht, Augustan, Rule, and Ruin, Kailche, Shinderele, Gano, and Leonu, Augustan, Dollar, Atlo, Gadi, Lahani, Gadem, Majinamor, Gurmagas.